Hey guys, Nintendo here. It's Spooktober again, which means it's time for us to delve back into the seedy underbelly of the gaming world with one of the most terrifying consoles of all time, the Wii. That's right, Nintendo's motion-controlled juggernaut wasn't just for keeping the kiddos occupied or for grandma to work on her perfect bowling game, the Wii was also home to a small subset of M-rated titles. So, join me today as we take a look back at a few of those M-rated games, check out some gameplay footage, and determine exactly how they earned their rating. Let's get to it. All right, just before we get started, I have some very exciting news to share with you guys. Uh, many of you have been asking me about this for months, and I am thrilled to announce today that Nintendo merch is back. If you head to the link on your screen, you can check out our brand new storefront. There you'll find the standard Nintendo logo shirts you know and love, as well as some brand new designs like this exclusive Nintendo 64 shirt designed by the talented artists at the Pixel Empire. Make sure to use promo code NINTENDREW for 10% off your order, and stay tuned to the end of this video to learn how you can enter a giveaway for one of three NINTENDREW merch prize packages. Okay, so let's get to our M-rated Wii games. Now, when I covered M-rated DS games around this time last year, I was actually able to put together the entire set for my collection because there were only 11 titles that came out for the DS that were rated M for Mature. Now, this time around, I did some research and through the ESRB website, I found that the Wii had right around 42 titles which were given the Mature rating. And while that may seem like a lot at first, it's really not that many when you consider that the Wii had over 1,500 licensed titles during its lifetime. That means that less than 3% of the Wii library was rated M. But regardless, for this video, instead of covering every M-rated title, I've picked out five titles which I think are particularly interesting or surprising to see on Nintendo's platform. Games that you might expect to see on Xbox or PlayStation, but are actually kind of weird to see on the Wii. So with that in mind, first up on our list is Dead Space Extraction. Dead Space Extraction is the 2009 prequel to the original title in the series, which came one year earlier, and is chronologically the second Dead Space title overall. The game shares a lot with its predecessor, with similar mechanics and a dark, foreboding environment. But unlike the first game, Extraction is an on-rails first-person shooter, as opposed to the standard third-person survival horror experience we've come to expect today. You know, every time I've looked into some of these more mature titles for Nintendo platforms, it never ceases to amaze me what developers were able to accomplish when it comes to visuals. In cases like this, sometimes M-rated games can have some of the most impressive graphics on the system, as studios try to push for more and more realism and get the most out of the hardware. All that is to say, this game looks pretty dang good for being on the Wii. On top of its high poly counts and advanced effects, the game manages to hold a consistent frame rate with very few slowdowns, which is pretty important for a rail shooter like this. The game is controlled with a Wii Remote and Nunchuck, but also supports the Wii Zapper for that true arcade shooter feel. Instead of playing through the eyes of Isaac Clarke, you see this story through a few different perspectives as the narrative follows a crew of colonists fighting against a growing horde of necromorphs, following the disruption of the ominous Red Marker. As far as how it earned its M rating, that should cover any questions. In addition to the single-player campaign, there is also a co-op multiplayer mode and a challenge mode which has players conserving ammo and making every shot count to aim for top spots on the leaderboard. It's clear that Dead Space Extraction was built from the ground up with the Wii hardware in mind, and while you might not expect Dead Space to translate so well across genres, this really does feel like a natural addition to the series and will definitely be familiar territory for anyone who's played the other titles. Perhaps most importantly in my opinion, Extraction nails the impeccable sound design of its predecessor, which was largely responsible for its terrifying and suspenseful atmosphere. Upon release, the game was met with mostly positive reviews, but because it was a relatively unknown spin-off title on top of being an M-rated game on Nintendo's flagship family system, it pretty much flew under the radar for a lot of people, and even earned GameSpot's award for Best Game No One Played in 2009. As for me, I can happily recommend it to anyone who is a fan of the series, even if you're not usually into rail shooters. It's certainly not my usual genre, but I've still had a lot of fun with it, so it's definitely worth another look. Next up on our list is Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Now, this is not the only Call of Duty title that made it to Wii, not by a long shot. In the five-year span between 2006 and 2011, the Wii saw some version of every mainline Call of Duty game except for Modern Warfare 2. The reason I chose Modern Warfare 3 out of all these games is that it was the last title in the series to be published on the system. 
It's really kind of strange to see a newer Call of Duty game released as recently as 2011 for a console that didn't support HD video. I don't know how many of you were my age when these games came out, but as I look back on them, I feel a kind of funny nostalgia, even though I never played too many of them back in the day. Being a high school kid and a Nintendo fan during the Wii era was kind of tough. I remember trying to convince my friends that the Wii could hang with the likes of the 360 and the PS3, despite its limitations. So when a game like Modern Warfare 3 came out, I could point to it and say, see, I can play that too. This hunk of plastic isn't just for your Wii Sports and your Super Marios. Well, along those lines, it's no surprise that the Wii version of these Call of Duty titles were fairly scaled back in order to perform on the comparatively underwhelming hardware. But Activision took note of the incredible sales of the console, and the developers, in this case Infinity Ward, did their best to build heavily modified yet faithful versions which were more suited for the less powerful machine. For what it's worth, aside from a few shortcomings, Modern Warfare 3 for Wii had basically everything the cross-platform release did. Of course, it had the single-player campaign, the cooperative Spec Ops mode, and a host of multiplayer game types. And when I went to capture footage for this game, I was surprised to find that the multiplayer servers were still online with an active player base. Apparently, these are some of the only Wii titles which still have online support, because the servers are hosted by Activision rather than by Nintendo's defunct Wi-Fi connection service, which kicked the bucket back in 2014. So, although there are arguably plenty of better ways to experience this specific title today, if you want to get a glimpse at one of those late-stage Wii games that really pushed the system to its limits, this might be just what you're looking for. Okay, for our third title, we have Far Cry Vengeance. First up, I've gotta say, I am a big fan of the Far Cry games. That might come as a surprise given my affinity for all things Nintendo, but Far Cry is one of those series that can't be missed. For the most part, each new title brings with it countless hours of exploration and satisfying combat. And as a lifelong fan of the Big N, I was really excited to find an original title made exclusively for a Nintendo console. Well, that's not entirely accurate. Vengeance is an upgraded remake of Far Cry Instinct's evolution for the original Xbox, which was an expansion of Far Cry Instinct's which in turn was a remake of the original PC version of Far Cry. Confused yet? Unfortunately, like so many early Wii titles of its era, this one succumbed to the curse of poor motion controls, which really puts a damper on the whole experience. For instance, to use a melee attack, you have to waggle the Wii Remote. To jump, you have to waggle the nunchuck. To zoom in, you've got to do this. Why? Why would you do that? Seeing as it was a very early Wii game, and undoubtedly still using engine code from three games prior, the graphics are not nearly as impressive as some of the other examples on this list. And on top of that, it also suffers from some questionable enemy AI. If you're used to the standard open-world gameplay the Far Cry series is known for, you might also be disappointed by how linear Vengeance can be, as it was built with that lesser hardware in mind. So, all in all, if you're a die-hard Far Cry fan, it might be worth it to pick this one up just for the sake of the series' history, but otherwise, you're not missing much. Okay, moving right along, next up is Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Now, full disclosure here, I'm not really familiar with the other Silent Hill games, so I don't necessarily have a good frame of reference as far as how it compares with the rest of the series. But I can tell you, from what I've played, Shattered Memories feels like one of the most well-crafted and thought-out experiences across the entire Wii library. Apparently, the story is a reimagining of the original Silent Hill, which came a full decade earlier. But from my experience, I can say nothing feels particularly dated at all. The overall presentation, and especially its chilling sound design, lead to a wonderfully unsettling atmosphere. And while I hate to keep revisiting the same point about these games pushing the Wii's capabilities, I think this might be the most graphically impressive game on the list. Part of that is likely because, given the game's core mechanics, there's not too much on screen at any one point in time, so the devs were probably able to do some clever programming magic to invest more resources in detailed models and effects within a fairly restricted environment. But seriously, if it weren't for the Wii's low resolution, this could easily be mistaken for an average Xbox 360 or PS3 title. And on top of its striking visuals, this one manages to keep a pretty consistent 60 frames per second, at least during its indoor segments. Now again, this title was not a Wii exclusive. It also saw ports for PS2 and PSP. But for what it's worth, the devs did try to make use of the Wii hardware in their own unique way. 
Of course, there are the standard motion control quick time events, but there are also some pretty nice touches for immersion. For example, when you receive calls or voicemail messages on your phone in-game, those messages will play through the Wii Remote speaker, which is kind of a cool way to break the fourth wall while simultaneously roping the player into the whole experience. The thing I find most fascinating about the game, though, is its use of psychological surveys to craft the experience around the user. The way I understand it, based on your answers to simple yes or no questions and various tests, the game starts to tweak certain elements of the story to match your responses, and ultimately leads to one of four distinct endings. All in all, Silent Hill Shattered Memories is an excellently realized and thrilling adventure that found an unlikely home on Nintendo's family-oriented platform. Definitely don't pass this one up if you get the chance. And finally, the last game on today's list is Dead Rising Chop Till You Drop. Chop Till You Drop is a remake of the original Dead Rising title for Xbox 360, and is the only entry in the series to make an appearance on a Nintendo platform. In contrast to some Wii ports, which were pretty much identical to their source material, this game had a lot of elements built from the ground up to help set it apart. For instance, whereas the original game focused on scavenging the environment for makeshift melee weapons and had a strong emphasis on close-quarter zombie smacking, this remake was more about long-range attacks with its rebuilt weapons and aiming systems. Oddly enough, this time around, the photography mechanic was scrapped entirely, but on the plus side, the game introduced zombified animals like parrots and poodles. What a time to be alive. The decision to make the move from the 360 was reportedly made after Capcom saw a great deal of success with the release of Resident Evil 4 for the Wii. Unfortunately, in this case, it seems that lightning didn't strike twice for the publisher, and the game was met with a fairly lukewarm critical reception. Apparently, the title suffered not only from the limitations of its hardware, but also due to tight time and budget constraints on the dev team. But really, what can you expect? It was probably kind of a strange concept for the developers to have to build an upgraded port while at the same time downgrading the game's visuals and overall complexity. All that being said, I think it's still a pretty fun experience in its own right, and at the very least it marks an interesting point in the series' progression and helped to fill a certain gap in the Wii's lineup. Alright, that's it for our M-rated Wii games for today, but if you enjoyed the video, make sure to let me know down in the comments below and I might have to make a part two. Before you go, let's talk about that Nintendo t-shirt giveaway. As I mentioned in the beginning, we have a brand new store over at pixelempire.com slash the Pixel Empire is a website which offers all sorts of amazing gaming-related products like posters, phone cases, hoodies, t-shirts, you name it. And on top of their money-saving deals and bundles, you can use promo code NINTENDREW to save 10% on all purchases. I liked their products so much that when I was approached about working on some new t-shirts with them, it was a no-brainer. And now we're giving you the chance to win one of three Nintendo t-shirt bundles absolutely free. Just take a look at my pinned comment down below and follow the link for a full list of ways to enter. And of course, a big thank you to the Pixel Empire for sponsoring this episode. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this look at five of my favorite M-rated Wii games. As always, if you did enjoy the video, please do consider subscribing to Nintendo for all sorts of cool gaming content, and make sure to share it with any friends who might find it interesting. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey guys, thanks again for watching and for making it all the way to the end of the video. If you like this one, here are two more videos you might like as well. As always, if you like what I do and would like to help out the channel, I've got a link to my Patreon on the right side of your screen. And otherwise, I hope you look forward to the next one. Take care!